Types of investments involve varying degrees of risk, and there can be no assurance that the future performance of any specific investment, investment strategy, or product, or any non-investment related content made reference to directly or indirectly in this broadcast will be profitable. Equal any corresponding indicated historical performance level or levels be suitable for your portfolio or individual situation or prove successful. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Investment advisory services offered through Wealth Quarterback, LLC. <laughs> Losing money in the stock market roller coaster? Frustrated with the government taxing you into oblivion? Worried about inflation? How do you prepare for so many financial uncertainties? Welcome to the show that will help you develop your game plan. The Financial Quarterback with Josh Jelinski. Josh is a noted financial advisor and president of the Jelinski Advisory Group. And he's here to answer your questions. Call into the show at 800-321-0710. 800-321-0710. Now, let's kick off your financial future. Here's Josh Jelinski. Hi, everybody. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback here, coming to you live. And we have a special guest, Professor Lawrence J. Kotlikoff, who is the inventor of the Maximize Social Security software and economist extraordinaire from Boston University. He is the author of Get What's Yours, The Revised Secrets to Maximizing Social Security, and he's going to be joining us to answer any social security question that you might have for 2021 and take general questions regarding social security. Good morning, Larry. Good morning, Josh. How are you? Great. Great to have you with us. So, Great to be with you again. So what's keeping you busy? Uh, what, what are some new articles you're writing on uh, Kotlikoff.net? Well, let's see. I've been working on um, uh, carbon taxation of late, uh, 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 marginal taxation, uh, tr trying to understand the poverty trap that uh, poor people are placed in when they uh, earn more money. They lose uh, so much in benefits and have to pay so much more in taxes that they have about a quarter of them have um, are facing marginal taxes above 40 70 percent so they're in marginal tax brackets above 70 percent a quarter of our poor people can you imagine that um, very little incentive to work and that's why we have them locked into poverty to a large extent so uh, I work, work on that also writing a, a book called money magic um, which is about personal finance, which is a book for the public, be out uh, in about a year, and uh, excited about uh, finishing that up. So uh, money magic that story. sounds exciting. What what is it about? Yeah. Well, it is about uh, things like so maximizing your Social Security, but also how to optimize uh, dealing with your retirement accounts, how to uh, you know decide when to retire. Uh, how to invest your money the way economics says to do it, as opposed to the way conventional planning says, uh, how to think, how to make yourself house rich rather than be house poor, how to unlock your trapped equity, for example, you know, why mortgages are, um, are big, uh, tax losers and financial losers. Why, why you might want to, for example, take out your 401k money and pay off your mortgage. Uh, there's lots of shockers. So that's why it's kind of magical because when you learn, how you can make um, uh, more money in a safe way. So let, let's go over that. Money. Let's let, that's a, that'd be a great topic for today. So how can people stretch a dollar more money in a more conservative fashion? Well, I mean, let's take, uh, for example, uh, just what I, what I said, uh, if, if you're paying a, a high rate on your mortgage, maybe you haven't been able to refinance, uh, but even if you have refinanced, you're still uh, paying a higher rate than you can earn safely. So this is like a safe obligation, uh, but but the safe investment that you can make uh, is yielding probably at least a one and a half, uh, 100 basis points or 150 basis points below what you're paying on your mortgage. So what if you take your money out of your 401k, let's suppose you're in a period where you're fur furloughed and you're marginal tax bracket's pretty low, uh, but maybe even when it's not, you take your money out of your 401k, pay the taxes, and then uh, use uh, what's left to pay off your mortgage, you may come up ahead. So 
I wrote a column in Forbes uh, this um, last year. I guess it was around uh, the spring of last year. It's on my website. It got over 500,000 hits, uh, showing that a middle-class household could raise their lifetime spending by about $100,000. So this is, uh, you know, a typical middle-class household. There's no risk whatsoever. It's a great, you know, seemingly, uh, you know, nutty thing to do, take your money out of your 401k and pay off your mortgage. But last year, we had the ability to do that without any penalty. And, of course, anybody over 59 doesn't face any 10% penalty on withdrawals from their I, I actually am not really referring to a 401k. I'm referring to an IRA because if you're in a 401k and you're uh, uh, still employed, you don't necessarily have an option to take money out. So I'm really talking about an IRA withdrawal from a traditional IRA. And of course, if you have money in a Roth, even better, take the money out of the Roth, pay no taxes, and then um, and then you're you know able to pay off your mortgage. So the the, the basic guy point here. Josh, is that our best investment these days, given that rates are so low, is to pay off consumer household debt. That, that could be a mortgage, that could be credit card bills, that could be an auto loan. Uh, all these things are yielding a much higher return than we can earn safely. So the safe uh, arbitrage here is to uh, uh, pay off, you know, the best investment is to pay off uh, household debt. So pay off debt, that's your, that's your uh, big tip. Uh, maybe delay social security. I know you're into that. Uh, what are some other money magic tips you're yeah. making? I mean, I, I don't want to suggest that I'm the uh, first person ever uh, say pay off. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I would be against that, yeah. but I, I mean, that's an a re yeah. area I would respectfully disagree. But I, I think for, for the average person who's going to not save it, I just love the idea of investing, you know, instead of taking money and prepaying my house, uh, yeah. I can take advantage of low rates at two and a half percent with my write-offs. It's like a 1.8% mortgage and I can invest that in uh, what's seeming like we're having hyperinflation with the stock market yeah, I mean, and I, with Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, but no, but I certainly respect your, I mean, it's a lot of people have that. Opinion, it depends right? on your, um, you know, your risk tolerance. But another way to think about this is suppose you have paid off your mortgage and then you, so you have your house free and clear, but then you turn around would you ask yourself a question? I mean, would you want to borrow on your mortgage to invest in the stock market? That's really uh, the the question here. And given well, that's really the arbitrage. Right now, or, or yeah. you could do um, what I've also heard is and done is if I can take that same um, money that would go to prepay a mortgage. I'm not recommending someone take out debt in order to throw that in the market or, or take out debt in order to buy an annuity. But you might be able to get a better deferral credit, sort of like uh, Social Security, uh, plowing that money into an annuity where you get guaranteed income for life and the internal rate of return might be three to 5% right now, um, which that's, that's not bad. Um, yeah, I've written about that idea as well, which is, and that's not, uh, that's an interesting idea, which is you know you take out money on the on the uh, on your house. And well, not you, taking uh, new debt, not taking new debt. I mean, not paying off existing. I don't like the idea of hawking your home to invest. Okay, but not paying you know really not paying off something that you would, could otherwise is at the margin. It's deciding to hawk your home, so. I have to respectfully disagree that it's not hawk in your home. It is because, you know, suppose you did actually pay it off. Now you're – and two seconds later you're saying, okay, should I go the other way? Uh, should I now hawk my home and use the money to buy an annuity? Uh, the problem with annuities, of course, is that they're not inflation indexed. Uh, some of them are – you can get a graded annuity that may rise at 2 3% a year, but if inflation goes out the wazoo – then uh, you could really lose your shirt on these things. So the, the nice thing about borrowing against your house in order to buy an annuity is that you have kind of an automatic inflation hedge. And at Kotlikoff.net, there's under mm -hmm. articles, there's an article about using your mortgage to hedge inflation because if inflation takes off, you win on the mortgage because you're paying back on watered-down dollars. 
but you lose on the annuity. Uh, so it's kind of a natural hedge uh, protection. So, yeah, I'm not saying, uh, you know, one thing. Yeah, we'd have to, you'd have to do the numbers for, for anybody. And that's yeah, why you that's have why, the economic yeah, have security yeah. planning software, which now goes by, I think, Maxify. Um, yeah, that's um, exactly what I'm trying to bring to the table, which is I'm not the first you, person to kind of, you're talking about this stuff, I'm talking about it, other people have been right about the general idea, but to, have, to put numbers uh, out there that are solid based on this Maxify.com software, M-A-X-I-F-I.com, it, um, it, you know, I, I was surprised that I could take a middle-class household and make them $100,000 uh, by, wow. you know, this move. And, and that's and, the thing know, too with black and white. It's, yeah, yeah, and that's the thing like a, too with yeah. using your software, Maxify Planner, which we can make available for anyone who calls us at eight 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 nine eight eight Josh today. You really got to do the numbers on all these decisions. You know, should you take that? You know, financial planning should more be an exercise in economic modeling than it is. Right. And yeah, you know, yeah. when we take a client through, you know, it, the usual answer is it depends. And, and what we're trying to do is boil down some general rules. Generally, it's better to delay Social Security. Generally, uh, you say it's better to pay off debt. Generally, I would say I'd rather take that debt and put it in something inflationary. But, you know, it, it's best to model those things out. Sometimes we do the modeling and somebody says, well, I might make an extra hundred thousand dollars, but I feel better paying off the debt, you know, and I don't know what I'm going to make in the market. I do know I'm going to make, you know, whatever, 3% by paying off the mortgage. I'd rather have a lot of people, you're right though, they're sitting on bank accounts earning 0%, 0 0.1. Right. And it's far better to pay off the debt than to uh, miss out on that. What, what I was referring to more with the annuity is if you put, let's say you had 100,000, you're paying off debt, right? Pay it all off. You have 100000 left in your mortgage. It's a 30-year fix. You have 10 years left. If you took that 100000 and you bought an annuity, say, with a 10-year deferral where, it, you know, some of these like double for income purpose in 10 years. So on two hundred grand, you might get twelve grand a year every year for life 10 years from now. So that might be a nice hedge that you may not have where you add that into supplemental income, but you're absolutely right. We have to do modeling to see if any of these steps are right for you. There is no one size fits all answer. That's the beauty of your software at Maxify, uh, which can be found by the way, you, you can purchase it at maxifyplanner.com or you can call us at 888-988-JOSH and we'll get you that for free. We'll be up next with your questions for the good doctor, Lawrence J. Kotlikoff. We'll be back after these messages. It's always on your mind. Do I have a mute? Retirement, whether you're 55 or 35. Not everyone wants to work forever, and most would like a Where's comfortable retirement. Button? You may already have a plan, but is it the right one? Josh Jelinski, host of the popular Financial Quarterback radio program, is ready to guide you towards financial freedom. He challenges the ways your parents and grandparents save money with fresh strategies, which are exactly what you need to navigate today's volatile economic climate. Josh's new book, Retirement Reality Check, is available to order on Amazon. It's an easy read that guides you through his system for securing your financial freedom, including tax-saving strategies, understanding the right investment mix, and more. Order now. Retirement Reality Check. Call Josh at 888-988-JOSH. Let Josh help you map out your retirement using fresh strategies. Call 888-988-5674. That's 888-988-5674. Hey, meet you out on the first tee? Yeah, I'll be right there. Just reading this article. On what? New bill Congress passed. Looks like it's going to affect the value of all retirement savings plans. My financial guy didn't tell me about this when I saw him the other day. Well, my guy did, and we made a plan. You may have heard of him, Josh Jelinski. Josh Jelinski is your guy? Listen, if you're 10 years or less from retirement... Which I am. Josh will give you a free economic plan, which includes retirement planning, a 27-point checklist to make sure your income lasts as long as you live. He'll even help you navigate the current tax code. I'm definitely going to call Josh. Cool, but first, can we play some golf? Call Josh Jelinski, host of the popular Financial Quarterback Radio Program, for your free economic plan. 888-988-JOSH. 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 
Hi, we're back. This is Josh Jelinski with a fan favorite, Professor Lawrence J. Kotlikoff. So, Professor Kotlikoff, uh, you took some flack back in the day so uh, for taking on the, the former president, so we won't, uh, we won't get into that. <laughs> okay. But you were my dad's favorite, one of my dad's favorite guests. And, and for everybody who knows how great of a guy Professor Kotlikoff is, uh, he, he really helped me the day after my dad passed away or a day or two after. I knew my dad would want me to do the show. And I knew he would want it to do with Larry. And Larry came and helped me do the whole show. I couldn't have gotten in, through it without you. So, uh, All of us all them, as we say in Yiddish, yeah? Yes. Yeah, hey, so rest it, in peace. It, it was a fun, uh, it was a fun show. I felt him smiling yeah. down. Yeah. So we got a lot to talk about. So, so the magic money thing. I know you want to sell. You know, you'll want to come on. We'll, we'll we'll promote the book like crazy as we we do all of your books. Um, you. But the magic money. So the principles behind magic money: delay social security, pay off debt. What are some other ones? Uh, well, sir. Um, well. So um, one of the money magic uh, tricks would be if, let's say you've lost your job because um, uh, of COVID and it's not clear it's coming back and you're 63 and you're trying to decide how to get to, how to get by and you're, you're thinking, gee, I should immediately uh, take Social Security and keep my uh, IRA money intact and take it later so I can defer my taxes. Well, there's no real advantage to deferring taxes at this point because uh, you're in a low tax bracket and also the return, the safe return on delaying uh, paying your taxes is, is zero because the, you know, the inflation index uh, tips right now are yielding zero. So there's no deferral advantage to uh, retirement accounts at the moment, given where the rates are. There is a tax bracket, uh, com advantage you want to smooth your taxes so taking your money when you're in a low tax bracket is basically the rule of thumb here now so a lot of people would say well still i want to i want to you know let my money uh, ride in the market and uh, take my social security first but uh, really a safe and smart thing to do is to take your retirement account withdrawals early if you need to in order to delay taking social security because you get a for sure extremely high return on on uh deferring your social security and that's equivalent that's to it. about eight percent simple interest correct seven eight percent so. well it's a little more it's a little bit lower because you know this is a this is not the same as a bond because if you wait um you're getting paid off in the form of an annuity which if you die it will die unless you have survivors. Your, your benefit. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Benefit. yeah, yeah, yeah. But but it would be like it would be like an eight percent uh, deferral credit, like there are in these deferred annuities. Yeah, it's not it's not compounding, but it's seventy. You know, your benefit at age uh, seventy um, is your retirement. Your retirement benefit is seventy six percent higher adjusted for inflation than it is at sixty two. And here's the thing. So let's be honest here. Unless you're going to pass, I mean, my parents passed at uh, 70, I don't even remember now, but it, I, around 71, I knew their health was pretty bad, so I said, hey, take it at 62. That they, My yeah, dad that had many issues. Right. Unless you, if you don't have many health issues, you should delay, even if one of you has health issues, because if one of you is going to live till 90 and the other is going to live till 70, the surviving spouse gets the higher of the two benefits and social security if, if, is the best yeah. annuity money could buy right now. Cause yeah. I don't think any offer 8% bonuses. They offer like five, six, seven, or if they do offer eight, it's like 8% simple interest. And it doesn't compound exactly the same way as the social security check. So no, I, and it's not inflation, not inflation, inflation protected. Uh, so yeah, if you're, if they're if you're the spouse in worse health, um, but you're the higher earner, uh, waiting till seventy may be, may make perfect sense. I uh, met this person. I think I might have mentioned this on the the show in the past. But I'll just repeat it. I uh, ran into a 
a top doc in Boston who had pancreatic cancer. He came down at age 68 with pancreatic cancer. Mm-hmm. I met him like a month later. He had told me, he then told me uh, when he heard I was an economist that it, he was he had just decided to take Social Security right away at 68 because he went down to the office. He wanted you to read to him to go to bed when <laughs> he had trouble sleeping. He wanted the economist so he, he, to, to read yeah, to him. Yeah, no, he, so he wanted to take, you know, he, he went down to the office. He said, I've got pancreatic cancer. I'm like, Going to live for two years at max, and um, and they said, "Well, take your benefit immediately." I said, "Well, um, tell me about your wife." And it turned out he has a wife who was there at the same uh, gathering, and she had no earnings history. I said, "Please go back tomorrow and withdraw your application because you're going to do better uh, receiving no benefits and passing away because your wife will get uh, 16% higher benefits if you wait." for two years when when you do pass away she'll have a stream of benefits or 16 percent higher adjusted for inflation that's eight eight plus eight percent uh for the rest of her life and he did that you can't beat that and that's the thing if you pass earlier in some ways it doesn't matter but the real risk i mean it matters to your family i miss my parents dearly but from a financial perspective uh, it, it'd be worse to be 90 and eating dog it's food. News. Yeah, it's so. good news to die early financially. Yeah, from a financial yeah, perspective. Basically. You don't have to worry about it, you know. Um, <laughs> exactly. It's, it's really bad news to keep living. Um, and it's a counterintuitive thing. It's like uh, the book of Ecclesiastes. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. it's sort of vanity. So uh, what, what other money magic tips do you have for us today? Well, think about, um, you know, uh, a lot of people have um, a good amount of money tied up in their homes in the form of trapped equity. Uh, they uh, Maybe you have a, you're living on $60,000 a year on Social Security benefits, you and your spouse, and uh, maybe you have a, little, a small IRA you're getting a little bit of money out of, but you have a million-dollar house paid off. So uh, if you just stay in the house, well, that's you know what you want to do because you love your house. But when you pass away, you will have – you'll be uh, leaving a, a million dollars that – maybe your kids are okay. You'll be leaving a million dollars that uh, has gone unspent. That's the notion of trapped equity. So there are things you could do. You could make a deal with your kids where you could sell them the house and give – and they could write a kind of a – contract with your long-term rental agreement so you could uh, rent it back from them. So like a sale lease back, you could um, rent out a portion of your house. Uh, You could um, uh, have your kids move in to your house with you and help you share the expenses. That's kind of another uh, kind of a deal with your your kids that you're making there. But a a third, another thing, a fourth thing. Yeah. It could be a deal deal with the devil. (laughs) If your yeah, kids want be, you out, but you could also set yeah, up yeah, trusts, yeah. life estates just, where, you know, it's all uh, legally protecting you. The other thing, and, and I hate to interject here, but for those of you back on our YouTube, I'm back from vacation. So our YouTube is live right now. Go to youtube.com and just search in the box for Josh Jelinski. J-A-L-I-N-S-K-I and hit the subscribe button. We have over 60 videos now in our YouTube library. And so we are live. We will answer any question you have for Professor Kotlikoff, Dr. Kotlikoff, Larry, as he goes by to his friends. Um, If you have questions on social security, money magic, we're going to also talk about I-bonds and other things. Uh, Right now we're talking about tapping i guess some of the hidden equity in your home so i just wanted to yeah, so thank you about, talk yeah. about the youtube channel because uh you're you're uh, one of our first guests on it so we've oh, worked great. out we've like worked that. out a lot of the kinks so that's fantastic congratulations the but yeah just on the um on untrapping your equity so a reverse mortgage is an option it comes with some considerable fees so we, you, you want to check out check this out very carefully but you know, one of the big concerns I have with a reverse mortgage is that you 
you basically what you, you have this million dollar house you go to this company you might pay um, uh, six twelve percent uh, of the amount that you borrow in fees which is a lot and then uh, you get uh, a chunk of money and uh, it can come in as a, as a stream it can even come as an annuity basically and then you have to pay um, at least in bookkeeping sense it starts accumulating what you get including the fees start accumulating at a higher than you know standard mortgage rate interest rate so at a pretty you know substantially higher uh, interest rate not dramatically higher but higher and uh, and then maybe after 15 20 years you have to uh, having spent this money but having not repaid a penny because you don't have to repay a penny uh, if you don't want to so you get this money in and then it's it's accumulating as an obligation and if you continue to stay in your house and what you owe, uh, again, what you've received, uh, including the fees, accumulated interest, if that amount that you owe exceeds the value of your home, you get to live in your house uh, rent-free because, uh, in effect, the mortgage company, the lender, owns your house, but they can't kick you out as long as you continue to live there. The risk here is that you may have to move. You might have to move, let's say, in 15 years, at which point you have to uh, you sell the house, and then you have to repay this significant debt, and now you're left with very little equity. So I was very concerned about that, but I spent some more time with uh, an expert a friend of mine named Tom D uh, Dixon, who um, has something called the uh, Financial Experts Network, where he does webinars for financial professionals. Anyway, Tom is an expert in, uh, in these things. He said, look, what you could do at that point, yes, you have very little, you know, less equity, than you'd otherwise have, but you could take out what's called a Heckam for purchase loan. That's a reverse mortgage that you take out at the point where you're buying a new place. So you, you have to move out of your current home, but now you uh, may want to replace that with a new home, but you don't have the cash for the down payment. But what you have a down payment, but nobody will give you a mortgage because uh, you can't get a mortgage without some stream of income, but you can get a reverse mortgage a new reverse mortgage. Uh, so that's something uh, that uh, uh, can be modeled again. Yeah, I mean, software. reverse mortgages, again, yeah. you know, we want to model everything. We'll talk more about your Maxify Planner software. And we have Arlene, who has a question coming up on her husband collecting her social security. Up next, this is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Don't touch that dial. Are you worried about the recent coronavirus crisis and how it may have affected your money? Hi, everybody. I'm Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback, inviting you to join me for my complimentary six ways to keep calm during turbulent markets webinar. If you schedule and keep your no obligation webinar today at 888-988-JOSH, it's a great thing to do. If you're stuck at home under stay at home orders, call us right now, 888-988-JOSH. If you're bored, there's never been a better time to get Get a second opinion on your wealth than right now. 888-988-JOSH, 888-988-5674. And go to my website, retirementrealitycheck.com today and take your free investment profile quiz. And when you buy my book, you're eligible for three free gifts. 888-988-JOSH. Call Josh Jelinski, host of the popular Financial Quarterback Radio Program, 888-988-JOSH. <laughs> Ski, the financial quarterback, and we have Arlene who has a question for Dr. Kotlikoff. Go ahead, Arlene. Yes. Hi. Thanks for calling. Hi. Hey, um, I am a very long-time listener, uh, but a first-time caller, so I'm a little nervous. Uh, and I have a Social Security question that I haven't heard anyone talk about. Um, I waited till 70. I'm 74. I waited till 70 to collect my Social Security, and that's fine. My husband last year worked half a year. He lost his job. So I had been listening to how he can collect half of my Social Security. So I said, well, wait till January. We'll see how we are because we have, you know, the half year of income. Um, so he did that, and he talked to two people at Social Security, and they said they base what he will get on half of what I would have gotten had I 
started collecting at 67. So what they determined was he gets $474 a month. And part of that is, you know, deducted for the Medicare premium. So he gets like 300 something a month. Is that possible? Well, uh, he's getting his own, uh, how old is he at this point? He's 67, and he has suspended his Social Security to let it grow until he's 70. We've kind of agreed on that. I, yeah, I've been listening oh, yeah. to so, Josh for years, okay, so, so you know, I picked up on the future. Yeah, that's, you guys were grandfathered under the old um, law to do that. So, uh, yes, that's the right thing. To, and unfortunately, it's not a huge amount of money because it's based on what he's getting is um, the uh, – uh, well, he's getting half of your full retirement benefit uh, apart from the Medicare premiums that come out. Uh, but then once he hits uh, 70, he'll take his own benefit, which will exceed uh, and his uh, exit, his spousal yes. part of the benefit will go away. Yes. And so, yeah, this is the, the optimal thing to do. You're doing exactly the right thing. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, it's not a bigger number, but it is uh, maximizing your lifetime benefits, no question. So you're on track. But the low, the low that. payment is something I, we didn't know about. We've never heard anyone talk about that. That they would base it on what if I, if I started collecting at 67, it would be based on yeah, half of that. I've never heard that before. Yeah, it's well, it's it is in my my co-authored book, um, Get What Yours: The Secrets to Maxing Out Your Social Security. Uh, you, you do get the spousal benefits are based on. Uh, the full retirement benefit of the other spouse. Uh, that's true for divorcees as well as uh, people have been who are married for 10 years and then got divorced. They can get a potentially a, uh, a spousal benefit, a divorce spousal benefit if they're not remarried. Or, and um, and it is based on not the actual Social Security benefit you're collecting, but the f- full retirement uh, benefit. And that's true if you took your benefit early, too. Uh, you, his, his benefit as a spouse would still be based on your full retirement benefit. So, not my full retirement is, benefit you know, now. Well, you're at full not retirement, your, but he's not. not so your when age he, 70 benefit. You, yeah. You're getting your age 70 benefit, but what the age 67 is your full, is your full retirement age, age 67. So that's the um, – he's getting it based on your age 67, which is your full retirement age benefit. And uh, when you take spousal, uh, the point of clarification is spousal is off of the spouse's 67 or full retirement age benefit, not their 70 benefit. Okay. Not their actual benefit, not their age. I think you were thinking it would be half of your 70 benefit is what I'm gathering from the. Yeah. And let me just double check. um, How much are you getting yourself in your benefit? I just want to make sure they're. Uh, 16 something, and then the premium for Medicare is deducted, so 14 something, 14,000 something a year. And how much a month? So. Uh, oh, gee whiz. We're talking about 1440 a month? In front of me, but it's way more than that. <laughs> so your husband's now 64, he's, six, he's 67. 67, sorry, 67. Um, well, it should be half of your full retirement benefit. So your full retirement benefit, I, I would, I think it's worth just triple checking that you're getting the right number. He's getting the right number. He, right? he, he yeah, he talked to two different people there at, at okay. Social Security, and they both came up with the same thing. And and it was like we were surprised because we just didn't know that it wouldn't be based on what I started getting when I was seventy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay, here's what I get. I get $1,623 a month. At 67 or at 70? My Medicare premium. At 67 or 70? Um, this was last year. That's what I was getting in 2020. But, that, but how old are you now? I'm 74. Okay, so, and you started collecting at 70. Yes, because I had to. They didn't have the 72-year hmm. start yet. Yeah, if you take 75% yeah, you, of that, it, it seems off a little, off bit, a little um, bit. Yeah, It feels low. It feels like he's getting too low a number. Uh, yes, um, that's, what I, that's what I'm calling. I've never heard that before. My numbers in my head 
which could be wrong, you know, say it should be around more like $600 a month, but just from doing so yeah, many of these calculations. You have you run, uh, run him through? you have his earnings history? Pardon? Do you have his earnings history? Uh, Do you have his earnings record? I don't oh, have it his in earnings. Me, no. Well, actually, you have, think, your, your, you have your earnings system. Actually, that's yeah, come on. I mean, here's the thing. What we're offering you today for, for any of our listeners, you, Arlene, um, I mean, my back of the napkin kind of numbers suggest about 600 a month. I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe you have some windfall elimination provision or, or something like that. It seems a little low, too. Um, yes, so I would call um, us at 888-988-JOSH. And we will give you uh, a proposal based on Professor Kotlikoff's software at no charge. So call us uh, 888 josh But there is no substitute for doing the numbers. And you could either do it on your own yeah. on MaximizeMySocialSecurity.com. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very good deal. It's like $40. Or you could get it free when you call us at 888 josh So... Um, yeah, and the other question I have, I mean, just connecting to what Josh just asked, was your husband a, um, did he have, a, was he in non-covered employment? Did he ever work for like a state government where they didn't take Social Security um, out of his payroll? Uh, he was a, a principal in Catholic school system. Okay, so I think Josh is right that probably the government pension offset is coming into play here. Is he collecting a pension from? No, but from Catholic the, school wouldn't have a pension. Yes. It would have the diocesan pension, but it wouldn't have a federal right. pension. He has a pension, but you know they don't pay much to begin with. So. Um, uh, well, okay. So our, our our software handles the. But uh, they could be. They could. They, somebody made a may have made a mistake and treated him like he was a public school principal or something. Um, no, I, I think Josh, you were onto the right thing. I think he's he's getting a pension from non-covered employment, which is reducing his his. Uh, okay, yeah, that's what just the number sounded like. I it, I always offset. running these; they seem about four hundred dollars a month. I don't know why. I think he's um, being penalized for having worked for a long time without having paid Social Security. Yes, uh, because the church you don't have to always pay into Social Security. Yes, yes, that's yeah, in but, some but ways. Here's, here, here's the good news, which is that. Uh, not the good news, but I mean, if you were to pass away, God forbid, um, he would get your full check because the, the government pension offset doesn't um, apply to uh, widower benefits or widow benefits. I, I, I can, if you don't mind, I can ask him right now. I'm yeah, no, no. Well, well, here's the thing. Um, we got other questions. Arlene, give us a call. 888-988-JOSH. And my advice is let's work through your actual numbers to come up with a solution. Make sure you're not getting, I mean, social security makes plenty of mistakes. I'm going to have professor Kotlikoff talk about mistakes he's uncovered later on, but next we have Jack who wants to talk about hedge fund failures. Go ahead, Jack. Oh, Jack. Hi. Hey Jack. Um, I read an article in the Wall Street Journal this week and also in another business section of a, of a paper about a big hedge fund that failed. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious because it had, seemed like it had exposure to some regular companies that even I'm involved with and that a lot of uh, probably middle class people are involved with. Do you know, could you talk about that comment on how that could affect uh, people going forward? On well, portfolios when the hedge fund fails? Yeah, hedge funds are usually uh, trying to um, hedge. Uh, you know, they buy one stock uh, uh, and then they short another stock uh, or security. So there are situations where the hedge is not perfect, where that you could lose on both ends of the deal and you can fail. There's um, long term. Uh, Capital management is LTCM is the best example here. Um, some really smart uh, economists and uh, other fi uh, financial experts um, invested. If I have it right, um, uh, they set up a big company hedge fund hedge fund where they invested in um, uh, long treasury bonds, which are safe security. I think they bought. Uh, what are called off the money long term treasury bonds that uh, weren't weren't as newly issued, and then they sold short 
the on-the-money bonds, these are essentially equivalent securities. They thought, well, gee, if if they're not, if their prices are not uh, kind of comparable, um, you can make money on the difference in arbitrage, and it made perfect sense as a hedge. But then um, Russia defaulted on its debt, and everybody decided there's a panicked and there was right. a ru- but there was, uh, was something this week on it with a company um, that has a relationship with a more run-to-mill uh, average uh, uh, mutual fund ETF company that many middle-class people invest with. And I'm wondering, uh, are they supposed to keep their funds separate from from that portion of uh, their company? And could they could that cause a financial exposure? Oh, you're worried whether you're you might have money in like a uh, uh, an institution where they've got this hedge fund operation on the side. Yes, yes, yes. Because yes, it was it was mentioned in the in the article, the and uh, they they said that they're a spinoff, but uh, it, and then they said they still have a relationship with them, doing some um, managing of their of their what I would call you know run at a mill mutual ETF yeah, fund. This sounds and like Bear Stearns. Uh, you know, Bear Stearns went under. Basically, because yes. they had a couple, if you quote, spinoffs, yes. they went under, and then they bailed them out, uh, and then they didn't have enough money left to cover. Right. Dummy, I can't. You know what? Can I mention the name of the hedge fund? Uh, if it's in the public uh, information, I guess you can. Sure. Yeah, and it was a company so, called Geode, Geode Capital Management, G E O D E, one yeah. of their. One of their, okay. uh, they it was written up. It was a big article on it. They basically had the, their hedge fund cl- failed, and they had to close. Hmm. So, geo capital management. So, do they have a whole bunch of hedge funds, or is this just one? I'm not, I mean, do you have money very with them? It's confusing. I don't know which one. It, it didn't mention, but they were a spinoff of a of a major institution. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't really. Um, uh, derivative trading. And a hedge fund has nothing to do with some index fund that you might buy. Unless that index fund, for example, had a 1% exposure, you know, then they might lose 1% in that. But it's generally, um, I mean, I see what you mean now, but I, I don't, um, yeah, that that's, that's very distinct. Um, yeah, that, that's a distinct element. You know, those are a hedge fund completely. Um, yeah, I know what he's referring to now. So, so that fund apparently was the company had a hedge fund business that they shut down, but they manage stock indexes for an index fund company. The two are completely separate. That makes sense. They're, they're not. They're not the same thing. Yeah, if, there, if there's like a firewall between them, that's not yeah. a problem. But there's a there, yeah. From what I'm aware of, there's a firewall between them. So, okay, wonderful. Well, uh, thank you for the call. We got to take a short break. We'll be back with more of your calls at 800-321-0710. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Don't touch that dial. Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback here. In these uncertain financial times, it is imperative that you guard your financial future. If you call within the next three minutes, we will offer our complimentary bear market survival guide, which will detail steps to help your plan to potentially survive the COVID-19 crisis. The bear market survival guide will cover how you might still be able to retire amid a volatile economic climate. We will throw in our complimentary 27-point ultimate game plan for retirement. Call us at 888-988-JOSH, 888-988-5674 for your bear market survival guide. Call Josh Jelinski, host of the popular financial quarterback radio program, 888-988-JOSH, 888-988-JOSH. It's always on your mind. Retirement, whether you're 55 or 35, not everyone wants to work forever, and most would like a comfortable retirement. You may already have a plan, but is it the right one? Josh Jelinski, host of the popular financial quarterback radio program, is ready to guide you towards financial freedom. He challenges the ways your parents and grandparents saved money with fresh strategies, which are exactly what yeah. you need to navigate today's volatile economic climate. Josh's new book, oh, yeah. Retirement Reality Check, is available to order on Amazon. It's an easy read that guides you through his system for securing your financial freedom, including tax-saving strategies, understanding the right investment mix, and more. Order now 
Retirement Reality Check. Call Josh at 888-988-JOSH. Let Josh help you map out your retirement using fresh strategies. Call 888-988-5674. That's 888-988-5674. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. And we have another caller, um, Shannon, who wants to know if she should pay off her mortgage. I think that question was was really, you know, there's like a sub-advisor and they had a hedge fund and the hedge fund went under. I don't, I don't think it has anything to do with a company managing yeah. index funds. I mean, I'm going to be very careful to, to hold um, securities that may be in a big, big company you know i would stay away from brokerage firms to tell you the truth because uh of the you know they're, they're nominally supposed to be guaranteed the cipic the um uh is a quasi-governmental institution that uh, a regulated institution that's supposed to insure you up to five hundred thousand dollars for fraud in that occurs in your uh, brokerage uh, company uh might not involve your money per se but the brokerage itself may not may go under and uh i think cipic is a fraudulent entity from what i could tell in terms of the way they dealt with the madoff scandal so i would be very careful about investing through a brokerage firm let me put it that way i I mean this is not exactly relating to that person's question but uh there is he might have read uh, some articles i wrote about cipic that are at kotlikoff.net so what do you invest in if you want to buy an index i mean if you're going to hold like money in a in a, you know, in a, uh, in a uh, uh, let's say, let's say you're, at, for example, I have a friend who has like five million dollars. He's a contractor, and he had a lot of, and he had it in one bank with no FDIC insurance above two hundred fifty thousand. I said, put the money into Fidelity's uh, short-term uh, Treasury uh, money market fund that that would be a much safer place to have your money parked than in the bank. Uh, if that bank, uh, if he had had uh, five million in a brokerage firm that, and he had been taking money out of the brokerage firm, uh, maybe he put the money, some of the money in the past, but then he started taking withdrawals to pay for some new deal. And the brokerage firm has some fraud and goes under, he could actually be uh, under the way they dealt with the Madoff uh, debacle, uh, he could actually be asked to repay, not only lose his money, but asked to be re- asked to repay the money he took out within like a year or so, two years of the time they went under. So it's an extremely risky thing to have money in a brokerage firm, hmm. is my view. Next up, we have Shannon. Should she pay off her mortgage? Go ahead, Shannon. Yes. Hi. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm in my I'm in my sixties. I have a mortgage of about eighty thousand left, the balance. Um, I plan to retire in about four years, and I was told previously by an accountant that you it's good it's a good thing to have a mortgage, as I guess with the tax write off. But um, it would be nice not to have a mortgage, so I'm not sure what to do. Yeah, you got bad advice from your accountant because you're um, you're clearly not going to have a itemized deductions above twenty five thousand dollars. So, in 2017, with the Tax Cut and Jobs Act law, they extended the standard deduction to twenty five thousand dollars. So there's no way you're getting any tax break from your mortgage. Well, you're couldn't it depend on her if she was higher income? <clears throat> Um, um, not not um, that high. I mean, okay. below. She's not 50. that high, and you'd have to have a ton of of other itemized deductions. Not on an eighty thousand dollar mortgage would you actually? Could she mm-hmm. have anything close to twenty five thousand dollars in deductible interest? Mm-hmm. So, um, so your your accountant is a, probably a lovely person, but he's out of date on this one, which is remarkable given that he's a tax expert. But um, you definitely. Uh, what what interest rate are you paying on your mortgage? Do you know? Um, it's it's about four point seven, I believe. Oh my God, that's really high. Yes, and and what you can earn in the market right now on long term treasuries is, uh, you know, if we're talking about, uh, you might have like ten years left in your mortgage, you mm-hmm. could probably earn maybe less than one percent 
uh, safely and you're paying close to 5%. So there's a huge arbitrage here. You just, uh, uh, if you have the wherewithal to pay off mm-hmm. this mortgage, you mm-hmm. want to do it. Uh, if you can't, certainly try and refinance it at a lower rate. I- I have been making additional payments. And we got to take a short break. We got to take our final break of the hour. If you want to hold on, you can for Professor Kotlikoff. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. And if you want Professor Kotlikoff's book free, call us 888 josh and schedule your no obligation discovery call. 888 josh 888 josh Hey, meet you out on the first tee? Yeah, I'll be right there. Just reading this article. On what? new bill congress passed looks like it's going to affect the value of all retirement savings plans my financial guy didn't tell me about this when i saw him the other day well my guy did and we made a plan you may have heard of him josh jelinski josh jelinski is your guy listen if you're 10 years or less from retirement which i am josh will give you a free economic plan which includes retirement planning a 27 point checklist to make sure your income lasts as long as you live he'll even help you navigate the current tax code I'm definitely going to call Josh. Cool, but first, can we play some golf? Call Josh Jelinski, host of the popular Financial Quarterback Radio Program, for your free economic plan. 888-988-JOSH. 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 Hi, is Shannon still there? Go ahead. Yes. Yes. The other the other strategy is, um, I was told you can pay it off, pay, pay the principal off as often as you can. I've been doing that, making extra payments. So it's really I'm on the fence whether I should pay off my mortgage or keep doing that. Do you have money in an IRA? Um, I have some money in a bank account that's doing nothing, and okay. I do have an IRA. Yes. How much do you have in that bank account doing nothing? Um, it's about fifty, sixty thousand. 60,000. Yeah. I mean, well, you could take the 50 right. doing nothing and just prepay your mortgage, and your mortgage would probably be done earlier. I mean, the, the only reason to not pay off your mortgage in your case is if you're going to take that money, invest it in the market, try to get long-term market rates. If you're, if you're very conservative and you don't feel comfortable doing that, it probably is better to pay off the mortgage. I like mm-hmm. I like having a lot of home equity debt personally because I like investing the difference and and I do get the tax write-offs from it. You don't um which is funny that your accountant gave you that advice. But uh you know that so so yeah. it's it's a question of somewhat is of risk tolerance of what you're okay with. Um mm-hmm. if you were to take that 50 grand are you going to plow that in the stock market today or do you want that as yeah. cash? No, I was go- I was going to in- put it into something, um, uh, an annuity or something. Yeah. Well, we, yeah. No, well, no, no, you can't. The, the smartest thing to do is to pay. You know, if you're, if you're going to make, the only reason to keep the fifty thousand in the bank account is for an emergency. Yeah. But there may be other ways to deal with emergencies. Like- yeah, and that's why you need a financial plan because you you don't necessarily want to take that fifty grand and plow it in the mortgage. I'm not telling you that because you may need an emergency fund we would want to look at your IRAs. And if you call today, you or any of our listeners will run you through the Maxify program, specially designed by Dr. Kotlikoff, or you could do it yourself at maxifyplanner.com. We'll give it to you for free if you schedule and keep your no obligation review. Uh, And what I love about Maxify is it's developed by an economist. It's not trying to sell you anything and you can actually take some of the guessing Here's the thing, you want a fact-based opinion. I love my accountant, you might love yours. Um, You don't wanna go by someone's shoot from the hip opinion. When that's the importance of financial literacy and financial planning, you wanna use an economic model to verify your decisions. That is the number one financial piece of advice that I I see people, that they ask their opinion. They, to, to like 10 different people, they get 10 different opinions. That's because you're not using a modeling system. If you use an economic modeling system based upon sound advice, like what Professor Kotlikoff does, you're not going to have all that unknown. And, and Larry, do you want to uh, close with a comment on that? Well, I would just say, you know, if you're, even if you're uh, 
in your, uh, you know, let's say you're 75, uh, you don't know exactly what future, you can't figure out in your head what taxes you're going to be paying in the future, uh, precisely what Medicare Part B premiums you're going to be paying. Uh, the uh, So the complexities you face, even at that age, let alone if you're 30, uh, you, ha- you have to have a tool that calculates all this stuff precisely. So it's not like an economic, you know, there's zillions of economic models, but but there's not zillions of paths of your taxes. And you want to make sure that you have software that actually is intelligent enough to get this stuff exactly right in terms of- Yeah, and a lot of softwares are just really calculators. They only have a few variables. Uh, they're not like what MaxFI does. So maxfiplanner.com or call us at 888-988-JOSH for your 45 minute Maxify conversation, 888-988-JOSH. Get the power of economic modeling for you. 888-988-JOSH, 888-988-JOSH, 888-988-5674. WOR and WAXQ HD2 New York. Relaunch, restart, recover. This is where New York comes for everything you need We'll be back in a few minutes. The Voice of New York, 710 WOR. An iHeart radio station. It's 32 degrees at 10 o'clock. Good morning, I'm Paul DeCastro. New this morning, a young boy is hospitalized in critical condition after being struck by a fire truck on Staten Island. Cops say it happened this morning when the child was hit near Broad and Gordon Streets in the Stapleton section at around 7.30. The FDNY confirming a department vehicle was involved in the accident, which is under investigation. The boy was taken to Richmond University Medical Center in critical condition. His name or age was not immediately known. The Senate inching closer to a vote on the nearly $2 trillion COVID relief bill. Senators worked through the night after reaching a compromise and extending unemployment benefits. Senate Democrats have agreed to continue $300 a week through September 6th. They also agreed on a tax break for those making under one hundred and fifty grand. A final vote on the bill that contains $1,400 direct payments to millions of Americans could come in the next few hours. Vaccines are helping prevent COVID-19 infections, of course, and now a new drug is being developed that could help treat those already infected. Ridgeback Biotherapeutics is reporting the pill it's developing with Merck called Molnupiravir significantly reduced infectious virus in patients after five days of treatment in stage two trials. That's according to the Wall Street Journal. This oral antiviral, which could be the first to work against COVID-19, targets the part of the virus that allows it to reproduce. 182 Two people who had tested positive within four days were studied, and researchers found no infectious virus in any who took two doses of Molnupiravir each day. More information from the companies could be out later this month. Brian Clark, ABC News. One New York woman's discovery of a secret apartment behind a bathroom mirror is fascinating millions on TikTok. Liz Warner reports. Samantha Hartso was probing the source of a cold air draft in her Roosevelt Island apartment when she came upon a curious hole in the wall behind her bathroom mirror. Further investigation involving a mask and a hammer yielded an actual passageway that led to an entire unfinished apartment hidden inside. She shared her astonishing discovery in a series of videos on TikTok and has now captivated some 8 million viewers. In sports, looks like manager Aaron Boone could be back in the Yankees dugout this weekend after having a pacemaker surgery on Wednesday. Spring training action today. The Yanks take on the Pirates. Later tonight, it's the Mets and Astros. College hoops on WOR today. Tip off at noon for Rutgers in Minnesota. Here's your WOR Weather Channel forecast. The dry weather pattern will continue this weekend. A few clouds from this morning into the afternoon with a high eventually around 34 and then clearing overnight with a low dippy to 25 as winds diminish. Sunny tomorrow to wrap up the weekend with a high 30 and a sunny Monday with a high in the low 40s, low 60s on Tuesday. I'm meteorologist Jeff Marr. Next news at 11. Start your day with Len Berman and Michael Rito in the morning, 6 till 10 weekdays. I'm Paul DeCastro on 710 WOR, an NBC News radio station. Tired of losing money in the stock market roller coaster? Frustrated with the government taxing you into oblivion? Worried about inflation? How do you prepare for so many financial uncertainties? Welcome to the show that will help you develop your game plan. The Financial Quarterback with Josh Jelinski. Josh is a noted financial advisor and president of the Jelinski Advisory Group. And he's here to answer your questions. Call into the show at 800-321-0710. 800-321-0710. 
710. Now let's kick off your financial future. Here's Josh Jelinski. We're back. This is Josh Jelinski, and we have a question from John. And folks, if you have a question for us, call us 800 321 710. We're a- answering all of your personal finance questions. Go ahead, John. Yes, I have a second home with a mortgage. I did have a fire, and right now I cannot refinance. I do have an adjustable rate, and my question is, how do I bring down the balance? Should I start paying towards the principal? Because I do have other expenses now to renovate. What's the interest rate on the mortgage? It's about uh, 3.1. Okay, so it's fairly low, and then you need other expenses, so is the is the choice between paying for renovations or prepaying, or do you have enough money to do both? Uh, I don't have enough money to do both, but we do want to, it's been in the family for, for uh, a while. We do want to renovate. And is renovate for the pur- purchase to sell or to rent out or no? To possibly rent out. Well, that's how the fire started. We rented it out and I accidentally burnt it over 50%. Do you have so did, then I had to and incur expenses? And you didn't have good insurance. I had a lot of problems with the adjustment with the insurance company. Okay, but I did get some settlement, but okay. not enough to cover the whole okay. renovation. Well, that's another financial tip. Make sure you have good home and car insurance. Don't go cheap on insurance, or it'll go cheap on you. And then usually, you want to hire an adjuster when you have a home incident or a car incident because they know how to negotiate with the insurance companies and they usually take a cut off of that. Um, A public adjuster? uh, Yeah, usually there are adjusters that will go to bat for you with the insurance company or a good agent too. I mean, I, I have a really great agent who, you know, it takes a while to find them. But but they can right. they should be able to fight with you with the insurance company. Uh, my my guess is, and I've been there too. I mean, I I uh, I went cheap one time on an insurance policy, and you know you don't think it matters, but it does. So in in an age where car and home insurance has become commodified, commodified, it's better to spend you know an extra couple hundred dollars a year, and then you have a company that's going to be with you when you really need them. So. Those are kind of tips for the general audience. As far as for you, if the purpose is for renting and no one will want to rent your house, if you do not do the repairs, the repairs come first. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Plus, we would do personal use. We would still use it as the family. Then if there is money left over, you can prepay with that. 3.1 is still pretty low. And then we would work out a financial plan where you could save in a side fund that could pay down your debt over time if you so desire. I'm not as big on paying off debt as Professor Kotlikoff, but I think his point is well taken. Many of you are sitting around, you have like 40 grand in cash lying around, nothing to do with, 400,000 of cash. I mean, I've seen people with you know millions of dollars of cash and then they have a 4.75 mortgage. Well, if you... If for some reason that cash brings you a security blanket, by all means, pay off the debt. If you're if you don't have any investments though, and you're worried about inflation, stocks are inflationary. Home equity isn't really going to protect you from inflation, and a mortgage actually protects you against inflation because rents are going to go up and your mortgage is going to stay the same. But uh, I, to- I totally respect his perspective being an economist. It's also the reason I would pay down debt is let's say you're irresponsible or your spouse is irresponsible. And if you have a lot of money and you're just going to buy, you know, my mother was like that. I love my mom, but she, uh, she would buy people grills. Um, you know, she didn't really have much money ever, but like if when she received an inheritance from her parents, I mean, it wasn't a lot of money. You know, she bought everybody like these Weber grills, you know, and it was like, well, mom, you know, thank you, but we really wanted you to save that for your future. So for somebody like my mother, I would say, hey, pay off the debt. For somebody who's also going to make bad financial decisions, let's say you sold all of your stocks 
in March of 2020, or, or you sold all of your stocks in 08, well, then there's something within you that is idiotic and f prone to fear. I, I don't mean idiotic in the sense that you're an idiot. I mean it in the sense that, you know, it, it's just fear-based. Very good, Ernesto is with us in the studio today. If you're making decisions by fear, and hey, that's cool. We all make financial decisions based on fear or greed at various times in our lives. Um, you know, the avoidance of pain or the gain of pleasure, and that often leads to bad decision making. So if you have money around and you are going to burn it, yeah, by all means, pay off your debt. But uh, down the existing mortgage, plus I do have funds to fix up uh, the property. Yeah, you could do that. Well, but, but I want to try and get But let's order. say you're in a two, but this is where a financial plan really comes in. Let's say you make 200 grand a year. What do you make a year? About 100. Let's say you make 100 grand a year. So you're in about a 25% state and federal bracket, maybe, something like that. After deductions, you're maybe paying 20%, something like that in taxes. That'd be mm -hmm. 15. So by you, let's say, doing a 401k, or an IRA, you're getting 20 cents on every dollar you put in back that you don't have to pay the government. That money's compounding. When you prepay your mortgage, you're only getting, you know, 3% or 3.1 back. So I'd rather get 20% back than three. So if you're not maxing out your retirement plans, if you're not maxing out your IRAs or Roths, I would say there's an order of operations. We should do a whole show on this. Ernesto, I'm going to task you with this. You're going to put some graphic. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. What is the order of operations in financial planning? Number one, have an emergency fund. So we had that woman with 50 grand. If that was all she had to her name, I would not tell her to use that 50 grand to prepay her mortgage. And that's the same thing with you. You want to have an emergency fund of six months to 12 months in the bank, liquid cash to weather a financial storm. Then you want to have enough insurance so that what happened to you didn't happen again. That's car insurance, home insurance, disability, and life insurance. Then you want to start maxing out your, your retirement plans, Roths, IRAs, 401ks, to get the max right off you can now. Then I would say start prepaying your debt. Now, credit card debt would be prepaid before even retirement savings because it's like 19% interest or whatever. But if you're talking on 3.1, also, by the way, what are you people doing who haven't refinanced? Like that woman was at a 4.75 mortgage. Like, why didn't she refi when it was 2.5%? You know, I refinanced my mortgage this year. Did you? Why not? What's your interest rate in your mortgage? We sold the house and, I, and I'm, oh, re and I'm I, renting. That's Okay, well, well, actually, now they're saying renting is smarter than buying especially in New Jersey, because you don't have the, the right. compounding costs of property taxes and your landlord now needs you. <laughs> so renting, there's a lot to be said for renting now, especially in a high tax state. So unless, you know, you live in an area where you could speculate, you know, like I had a buddy of mine, he lives in Palm Beach, Florida. You know, he bought his house for like 1.9 million. He sold it for like 5.5 or something like that. Uh, but who would have thought, you know, COVID would happen and no one would want to live in New York City and they're all moving to Palm Beach, Florida. I wonder if next year they'll all come back. I don't know. It gets hot there in the summer. So we'll see. So any other questions on that before we move to our next caller? John? No, I think I'll contact you because you're very knowledgeable and I know you're local. So maybe I'll get together and make an appointment with you. Yeah, that'd be nice. Our office is... Uh, wherever you are now with the wonderful power of technology, we can be right in there with you in your living room at work. Call us 888-988-JOSH with the power of webinars. Literally like changing the world. I kind of like the whole, the aspect of COVID that I like is like the, the advent of the Zoom meeting. Zoom became a verb, although we don't use Zoom, we use a different 
uh, technology that's more secure, or, or IT people say, but Zoom is a verb. And it's, it's uh, interesting. Whenever something becomes a verb, I'm going to Google that. Let's, let's Zoom. It's very interesting what happens. And they had big news this week where they were like three or four hundred percent. And there's articles about, you know, Zoom fatigue. But I'd much rather have Zoom fatigue than drive around in a car three hours a day. I'm not going to do that ever again. And I think a lot of us have rethought, like, did we really need to drive? You know, I would schlep to Long Island and New York and all parts. Of it. Now you, we can meet you wherever you are. So call us at 888 josh and we do it securely. So give us a call, 888 josh and you get the free retirement reality check. We're also live now on YouTube. Yes, YouTube. Uh, go to youtube.com, search for the financial quarterback. And the market has had a bit of a correction from February 19th to March 6th. Once again, my vacation indicator, we went off on vacation, proved correct. My beloved June always says, don't go on vacation, Josh. The market will crash. And, and it's like clockwork. Whenever I go away, the market goes down. And so next time we're going to do an indicator, next time I go away on vacation, I'm just selling everything. And then buy back when I get back. Now, I had a theory of why that's the case, which I think it, it, it was like the old sell it away in May and go away theory. I think that today work is 24 seven. So what happens is the market goes up, 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 then breather, up, 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 breather, up, 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 crash. Just kind of like human psychology, human behavior. And now, now Stan Harley has been on the show many times. He says it's the cycle, you know, the, that, that, you know, nature has these rhythms and it's not perfectly predictive, but it, but it does explain the phenomenon that I see or that, uh, one of my beloved clients sees, uh, whenever I go on vacation. So I, I guess, it makes sense. You know, in the summer, there's usually some breather, you know, it runs up in the summer, everybody's happy. And then, you know, towards the late summer, you know, people selling off because they've seen the market rally. So we're going to take a short break. And when we return, we'll be back with your calls on All Matters Financial. If you have a financial question, call me right now, 800-321-0710. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Don't touch that dial. Are you worried about the recent coronavirus yeah. crisis and how it may have affected your money? Hi, everybody. I'm Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback, inviting you to join me for my complimentary six ways to keep calm during Turbulent Markets webinar. If you schedule and keep your no-obligation webinar today at 888-988-JOSH, it's a great thing to do. If you're stuck at home under stay-at-home orders, call us right now, 888-988-JOSH. If you're bored, there's never been a better time to get a second opinion on your wealth than right now. 888-988-JOSH, 888-988-5674. And go to my website, retirementrealitycheck.com today and take your free investment profile quiz. And when you buy my book, you're eligible for three free gifts. 888-988-JOSH. Call Josh Jelinski, host of the popular Financial Quarterback Radio Program, 888-988-JOSH. Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback here. In these uncertain financial times, it is imperative that you guard your financial future. If you call within the next three minutes, we will offer our complimentary bear market survival guide, which will detail steps to help your plan to potentially survive the COVID-19 crisis. The bear market survival guide will cover how you might still be able to retire amid a volatile economic climate. We will throw in our complimentary 27-point ultimate game plan for retirement. Call us 
at 888-988-JOSH, 888-988-5674 for your bear market survival guide. Call Josh Jelinski, host of the popular financial quarterback radio program, 888-988-JOSH, 888-988-JOSH. Back, taking your calls at 800-321-0710. As always, I love to hear from you. 800-321-0710. If you have questions on stocks, bonds, annuities, whatever question you have, no question is a dumb one except the one that you do not ask. So call us now, 800-321-0710. Social Security is adding new guidance to online statements. Social Security is stepping up its outreach efforts to work to working Americans of all ages by including fact sheets with new guidance when workers access their estimated benefit statements online. It is a welcome change and long overdue. Here's the other thing. Make sure you... you authenticate all of your financial accounts. There has been um, an uptick in cyber attacks, cyber crimes, fraud attempts. If you are listening and you don't know what multi-factor authentication is, call us at 888 josh and we'll do a cyber security and your financial accounts review. Every one of your accounts, whether you are a client or are not a client, they often do not force multi-factor. Why? Uh, we used to have accounts with one firm that did enforce multi-factor and people had a real problem with it. Um, so what we're seeing is you must set up multi-factor authentication. You know what that is, Ernesto? It's where um, you know your password, but then you have to have a key, or at least yeah, a or they, key is they text step. you, or you have an app. You have to have two ways to get on, because if think of it this way, you know, I could I could make up an email address, Ernesto at gmail.com, Ernesto at yahoo.com, and it would look very much like yours. I could know your address. I could set up an account. You know. The multi-factor would mean they would have to steal your identity and steal your phone. So we are seeing that many, especially people over 50, 55, they, they do the easy thing. And this, is, I mean, if you have an account with Fidelity, Schwab, Vanguard, whatever, make sure you set up multi-factor authentication because many of the institutions we're learning are not enforcing that, uh, you know, they can, I guess, afford a breach. You cannot, folks. So make sure you set up multi-factor authentication on every account you have. And if you don't know how to do that, we have a team of financial advisors, staff, where we can help you. That'll be free when you schedule and keep your no obligation. We're not going to do that if you're like, you know, hey, but if you want to hear what we do for, you know, it could be 15 to 45 minutes, hear why you should hire us. Well, why should you hire us? Number one, quick, we are a, we are a holistic. We were holistic before it was cool, and our software goes over everything from protection, savings, and growth. If you think about that guy who called in, he had a fire we don't do car and home insurance, but I would say, hey, why don't you why don't you up your game here? People worried about investing. If you have a fire, that's really tough to recover from. You know, people with Hurricane Sandy, where we were from, really hard to recover from. And also, head over to our YouTube channel, youtube.com. Hit the subscribe button. Ask us any question you have. Do we have uh, chat enabled on the YouTube, Ernesto? Indeed, yeah, we you do. You can ask we, a we question on the YouTube if you're bashful. Uh, you can ask questions here uh, with me, and Ernesto is helping out, doing a great job. Also, Tom Clancy, 
the man behind a lot of the tech. He's like the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, he's no, the man nobody, behind nobody the, uh, sees curtain. Tom, but he's here. <laughs> he's always watching. <laughs> Tom, he's, he, he's always watching. Not in a creepy way. It's good. Uh, it's watching our backs. Yeah, and then he's here, uh, but but he's not here. <laughs> it's like the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so, okay, who do we have next? Uh, w- folks, give us a call. We do have some phone lines that are open, 800-321-0710. A lot is going on in the world of finance. Most dangerous 401k myths. Most retail 401k and 403b plans are run by generalists who turn over frequently and have little to no industry experience and training. So like uh, take Ernesto. Ernesto and I have known each other for many years long time and small business owner i'm a small business owner do you get approached by 401k people much i do and it, it's uh you calling them a generalist i think that's very interesting and yeah, I, I think they're nice guys they generally have an insurance bias and and by insurance bias i mean i like insurance as a part of the but like for some reason you know it, it'll end up with with uh some product that that guy, you know, it's like always like an end around pitch. One of the things we'll help small business owners with is with a 401k or 403b plan, not run by generalist. So generally, and what I mean by generalist, you'll have a nice 401k, 403b person. They are good at setting it up, but they're not good necessarily at the investment menu. So when I got into 401ks and 403bs with our company, I was shocked at how little time was spent on the menu. And I asked uh, one of the leading providers, and we love them, you know, uh, they, they do a great job for us. And we said, well, what should we, how many mutual funds should we pick for this fund? And they were like seven to 10. And I was like, what? I, give, the, give the employees 30 options. And they were said, well, uh, it's due to the new fiduciary rule that Obama passed. Well, I'm like, how does that violate the rule that Obama passed? Which by the way, was an un, it was not even passed as a, I don't believe it was a law. I believe it was a you know, like an executive order that Trump never got rid of. <laughs> now, he got rid of the one fiduciary rule, but then he instituted what's called regulation best interest. Now we are fiduciaries when we help 401k plans, but generally 401k, 403b plan, it's kind of something you do for the write-off. You do for the ease of use. Maybe you do it with your pay, uh, check vendor and it's not something you spend a lot of time on but it's sometimes your biggest asset so I recommend everybody call us for a 401k 403b review even if you don't think you have a lot of money it is worthwhile we are accessible as a financial company uh, we've never had minimums for that reason and we like helping everyone most retail 401k 403b plans, this is an interesting article from rpaconvergence.com are run by generalists who have frequently little to no industry experience or training. Uh, that is very true. Uh, they're good people. But I remember one time we did a 401k for a company and the, the, the big company, which is like, you know, a multi-billion dollar company you've heard of, they sent someone like who they didn't know any more than, than like we knew, you know? And, and that's the thing. It's very important. You pick specialists and we can help you with that at 888 josh I'm going to talk about a tax trap for your 401k. But first we have Steve who is advice for a 21 year old son. Go ahead, Steve. Yes. Hi. Hi. I have a question. Sure. Go ahead. And Tom, Tom, our resident cybersecurity, real quick, says, multi-factor is another piece of information in addition to your username and password. It could be a hardware device such as a phone, a USB key, or PIN code. That's what I said. They got to steal your phone. My, my, but his is the more precise definition. Go ahead, Steve. Okay, you ready? Um, my son just got a job. Um, it's computer tech. He's fresh out of college. He makes about seventy five eighty to start, and um, and he's twenty one. What does he do making seventy five to eighty grand a year? Mm-hmm. What he's twenty one makes seventy five to eighty grand a year. What does he do? 
<laughs> He's in computers. Oh, great. Computer uh, security. Okay, great. Wonderful. So yeah, so oh, it's it's a very um, – the, the positions are um, in demand right now, so we wouldn't have a problem going forward. So my, my, my basic question is that I told him that job performance right now is critical. So – um, I, I didn't want him to skimp on, on some on, on housing and auto. I want to make sure that, that wasn't a problem for him uh, mentally. And the rest of it, um, we'd like to see what he needs to do going forward to become a millionaire. Well, yeah, well, the question. well, that'll be very easy if he's 21 and starting saving, you know, 20% of his pay right now. Well, he's not doing that yet. What happened is he's getting a 7% matching from the company. Okay, well, let's start. And being that he just started, um, his rent is 1600 a month, car payment about 400 a month, and uh, that's, that's pretty much it. But uh, he's 21. He's uh, spending a few dollars. Yeah, what's he spending be... money on? Is he going to the bar every week? <laughs> yeah. No, there's no bars. <laughs> They're are, all closed. Are, are there girls involved? I, 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 yeah, I would say yes. I don't know. So he might be spending a lot of money on door dashes and trips to the Absolutely. liquor store to wine and dine his uh, girlfriend. I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying, I think he, he should be saving 20 grand a year at a minimum. And Okay, let me ask you this. If you're paying taxes, you're making about 80. Your, rent's, your rent has to be 16 because otherwise you don't live the way he needs Yeah, but his taxes are nothing. His taxes are like 20. Per, I mean, his taxes are significant. But on eighty grand a year of income, is, is X. yeah. So it takes sixteen grand away, something like that. Eighty minus sixteen. All right. And what about rent and car payment? Okay, and sixty. Food? So we're down to sixty-four grand. Say a thousand a month for food. That's you know fifty-two. Say another twenty grand for housing. You know thirty-two mm -hmm. minus forty-eight hundred. He should be saving twenty-five grand. No, forget twenty. He should be saving about twenty-five. A year with the matching funds, also yeah, the percent yes, he's 21. He could be a millionaire by 30. Why mess around? That's what well, I did when I was young. Uh, all right, well, let's say if we split the baby and we make it no, no, we're not going to split 12. the baby here. Do you want him to be a millionaire or not? What do you think? I'm calling you. Well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm what I'm saying is, I, I, what I'm saying is not necessarily the easy path. Tom Clancy, our, our <laughs> chief compliance officer. Tom should be on the show. Tom should be a guest. Uh, right. He says well, he, he needs bought, to he spend. Oh, wait, wait. No, no. Here's the thing. He needs he to spend. No, wait. No, this is important. This is important. Apparently, Tom says because he's in IT, Tom is an IT expert. He says he needs to spend five grand a year on his training to keep his skills up. Okay. So that Fair leaves enough. us with 21 grand a year that he should be saving. 20 to 21 grand. And there's no excuse. He should save 20 grand a year. Okay, so now let's say that, that let's say that we're going to push toward that goal. Okay, what about a Roth or a four hundred one k? Like, what is the best way to take this money and start going on the right path with it? That's my well. I, that would be the purpose. That would be the purpose of a meeting. Have him call us at eight 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 nine eight eight Josh. Generally speaking, we want to have an emergency fund of six months cash in the bank. Generally, we, we want to see him max out his Roth, take up to the 401k and match, max out his insurances, because if he's disabled, that would be an issue. Uh, max out his life insurance, because he's young and cheap, and he would w want to buy cheap term that's convertible to a good hole. Uh, those are some general principles, but I would have him get the review at 888 8 josh Any other questions? No, thank you for that. I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun, and we would. By the way, folks, I love helping people twenty to thirty, and and Steve, you may be, um, for some reason, parents of kids like this can go two ways. Typically, I'll have parents bring their kids to me, and they'll say something like, "You know, don't lose my kids' money," so they're overly conservative, so they don't put as much in the market, which is fine. Um, the other thing, Steve, that you may want to do is we may not want to put the extra money in the 401k because we may want that available for him to invest down the road. So, so liquid money may be important as well. 
but typically the conversations with people 21 goes one of both ways. One, the parent says, you know, make my kid a millionaire by 30. We can do that if if they are aggressive. But then when I say hey, save 20, 30, they're always like, whoa, whoa, what am I talking? No, well, why? What are they going to spend their money on? They don't have kids. The time to become a millionaire is in your 20s because you have no children. You can sleep on a floor. I would say 1,600 rent is probably too much. He should rent out a room to his friends and go 400 a month with three friends. Like, what are you going to do? You know, they go out at night because they're bored. I mean, I was made fun of when I was 20 and would go out with my friends from college. Um, I didn't spend money on booze. I, I spent money, when I was hungry, I would take a thing of peanuts and raisins. So instead of spending money when all my friends were, were spending money going out to stay awake late at night and still have a good time, I would, I would eat, you know, nuts and raisins, you know, and I think the only thing I really spent money on, I think I used to drink a lot of Slurpees. So I'd go to 7-Eleven, I'd get like a Coke Slurpee. So, but like, really, why would you spend a lot of money? Think about this. If Steve, if your son's spending a lot of money on women, He's going to be attracting the wrong woman. So, so like you actually, when you're in your 20s and you ha you're making money, whether you're a woman or a man, you want to actually pretend you're poor with the opposite sex so that, or whoever you're trying to attract, um, because you don't want to, um, you don't want to attract the wrong person. So, I would say be frugal. So that's my advice. Next up, we're gonna have Noel or Noel, who has a question on Roth conversion. I think we're late for the break, so we'll take a break right now and we'll be back with your questions at 800 321 0710. And call me right now, get my book, retirementrealitycheck.com. If you go to retirementrealitycheck.com today, buy my book, you get three free gifts when you buy the book. Three free gifts. No, three free gifts. We'll be back after these messages. It's always on your mind. Retirement, whether you're 55 or 35. Not everyone wants to work forever, and most would like a comfortable retirement. You may already have a plan, but is it the right one? Josh Jelinski, host of the popular Financial Quarterback radio program, is ready to guide you towards financial freedom. He challenges the ways your parents and grandparents saved money with fresh strategies, which are exactly what you need to navigate today's volatile economic climate. Josh's new book, Retirement Reality Check, is available to order on Amazon. It's an easy read that guides you through his system for securing your financial freedom, including tax-saving strategies, understanding the right investment mix, and more. Order now. Retirement Reality Check. Call Josh at 888-988-JOSH. Let Josh help you map out your retirement using fresh strategies. Call 888-988-5674. That's 888-988-5674. We're back, and we have, is it Noel or Noel? Go ahead, you're on. Noel, go ahead. Actually, it's Noel, uh, but uh, thank you, thank you for taking my call, Josh. I uh, appreciate your show. Thank um, you, Noel. Uh, my wife and I are uh, going to be turning 72 this year. I'm going to be withdrawing my first minimum required distribution this year. And uh, I, in addition to that, I was contemplating doing a, a partial Roth conversion on a small piece of my, that I have in the traditional IRA. Um, and I was, we, with the required minimum distribution, we're just going to be entering the 22% tax bracket. And my thought process was, at least for calendar year 2021, to withdraw the additional monies for the possible Roth conversion and still just brush up to near the top of the 22% bracket. That was my thought process. Um, and as a critical point of information, we would, the taxes to be paid on the Roth conversion would be coming out of those proceeds. Yeah, well, we'll, uh, well definitely. Well, thanks for the call, Noel. Uh, there, there appears to be some feedback so i'll i'll try to answer your question 
Um, you know, if you take an RMD, an RMD cannot be diverted to a Roth. An RMD can be diverted to three different tax advantage accounts or four different tax advantage accounts. If you want to take the money above the RMD, which I, I gather what you're doing, that's called the strategic rollout. You can Roth up to your bracket, which is 22%. I think that's a great idea uh, for tax smart planning. And then you take the RMD and if you don't need the RMD, you put the RMD in something that you're not taxed twice upon. What could that be? That could be in stocks that do not pay a dividend. So then you're only taxed when you go to sell it. That could be in life insurance that grows tax. You want to make sure you want to buy the right life insurance because a lot of people schlepping the wrong types of policies. But a cash value policy that the costs are fixed so that the insurance company cannot uh, hurt you as you get older. So give us a call, 888-988-JOSH. For the free review, I got an email to, just now. She said, I loved it when you schlepped to Long Island. Schlepped to Long Island and I'll make you a wonderful dinner. Well, for you, I think I'll do that. Would you go, Ernesto? I would. You would love this woman who sent me the email. She's the best. She's like a member of my family. <laughs> how many years has she been? Uh, how many years has she been a client? Years, but you know, she uh, really is a, a darling woman. She knows who she is. So, was she a client she, back when you had a, a cheap car that you had to put, like you know twenty years ago when you had to park down uh, the street? No, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Those, those those clients were the best. One time, because I had no money. Well, it's not that I had no money. I was very frugal. I did not want to spend overhead on... This is a funny story. I, I don't know. Should I tell it? Go ahead. So I was like, I don't know how old I was. 23, starting out the company. And we were expanding. And there really weren't Regis offices. You know what the Regis offices, the executive suites sure. that you ran yeah. for the day. Okay, there weren't those. So I found a deal doing a Regis with a, a doctor. And this guy was a really shrewd, smart Filipino doctor, husband and wife, uh, and they would rent out. So you go to a doctor's office, you think it's like Dr. Ernesto's office every day of the week. And he, they have an office in Whiting, an office in Tom's River, an office in Red Bank. An office there. It's not. So they'll like sublet the, the medical office one day to this doctor, another day to this doctor, another day to this doctor, and they would then rent it so they'd have a freehold office. And so I, I called him up because they had a for rent. I said, oh, will you do that with me? And he said, sure. But it didn't really work out well for financial meetings to see like a skeleton, you know, the old doctor's <laughs> offices. They used to have a skeleton. They don't have that anymore. They must have said like it's creeping people out. But so literally some of my first meetings with clients Literally, there was a skeleton there and like the, the, the picture of the human anatomy that they leave up. And then after a couple of months, a couple of weeks of doing it, maybe a month, I was like, this is just too weird. Uh, was this here locally? Yes. Can we, was it Dr. Ray's? No, 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 yeah. no. I don't want to say the doctor, but uh, it was in, it was in um, Whiting when we were expanding to Whiting. And the guy was a smart guy, but it just, it wigged the clients out too much. Uh, they didn't get a warm and fuzzy feeling doing meetings where, where they had the, the skeletons, the human anatomy. Uh, they, they didn't have a, the, the table you lay on because I used the doctor's office. <laughs> you know, when the doctor reads stuff and someone's going to the doctor and they're reading the chart, that's where I was. So we have Tom, who's a question of maturing H bonds. He dropped off. Tom, if you want to call us during the break, recall us at 800-321-0710. Sarah has a question. Go ahead, Sarah. Hello. Thank you for taking uh, my question. Uh, I, I just have two questions. I have a Cigna 401k, and it's insured by SIPC. Is that safe? Well, SIPC... Uh, Professor Kotlikoff had some issues with because people were not really protected from the Madoff issue. Um, you know, the SIPC protections are valid, but it depends on, um, you know, with, 
with Madoff, I believe it was that like the the clients that he screwed were were above a certain amount a of sign, money. A sign, it's a Cigna four hundred one k. Yeah, I'd I'd have to look. I mean, generally, SIPIC protects against the loss of cash and securities held by a customer if a financially troubled member brokerage firm goes under. The limit is half a million dollars, which includes 250 limit for cash. Now we have relationships with, with, for example, Fidelity, where they actually have like insurance against even the sipping insurance. But I have a million dollars there, so I'm not covered. I don't know. I'd have to look. And if you want to call us at 888 josh we can call your 401k company and ask them to show proof of coverage for sure. So it's called proof of coverage? Okay. No, I'm just, I'm, I, you know, it's, it's not called that. It's just I'd want some external validation. Meaning, you know, when I called, you know, Fidelity, who uh, we use as a brokerage firm, okay, they have... Uh, essentially, you know, Lloyd's of London as a policy. Now this SIPC only protects you from fraud or insolvency if your brokerage firm goes under. It doesn't protect you from losing money in the stock market. No, it's, and, it's, all, in, it's all in fixed. It's all in cash. Well, you should be fairly fine, but, but let, let's, uh, let's verify. As Reagan said, did Reagan say to Gorbachev, trust but verify. Does that make sense? Don't want you worried. So but I call should us. ask them for, for, for proof of coverage? Sure. Yeah, sure. I mean, I don't know if they'll provide that to you like that. I mean, what we would do, it's amazing how many people call and then they, you know, they don't set up an appointment. But we're, we would help you at 888-988-JOSH if you want to. Yeah, I mean, I would ask them for some proof of coverage. If you can't get it and you need help, we'll do a three-way call with you and your institution. But SIPC does not protect you from, it did not protect people from a Madoff situation. It did not, it's not the same as FDIC. It is merely if your brokerage firm goes under, there is some protection for you up to 250 cash, 500 limit, according to SIPIC.org. Uh, you can ask your member firm if they're a member of SIPIC. And uh, Professor Kotlikoff's thing was, Madoff, I guess, was a member of SIPIC and it didn't protect everybody. I, I really am not an expert in that, um, in what happened with, with people who were hurt under Madoff. I know the way to protect yourself really from a Madoff circumstance is use a reputable third-party custodian that maintains the insurance separately and that they don't hold constructive receipt of your funds. So like when you invest with us, we don't hold your money. So, you know, that's a very important distinction. Okay, so we'll be back after these messages. This is Josh Jelinski. And if you want a review of cybersecurity in your portfolio, SIPIG in your portfolio, call us 888-988-JOSH, 888-988-JOSH. Hey, meet you out on the first tee? Yeah, I'll be right there, just reading this article. On what? New bill Congress passed. Looks like it's going to affect the value of all retirement savings plans. My financial guy didn't tell me about this when I saw him the other day. Well, my guy did, and we made a plan. You may have heard of him, Josh Jelinski. Josh Jelinski is your guy? Listen, if you're 10 years or less from retirement... Which I am. Josh will give you a free economic plan, which includes retirement planning, a 27-point checklist to make sure your income lasts as long as you live. He'll even help you navigate the current tax code. I'm definitely going to call Josh. Cool, but first, can we play some golf? Call Josh Jelinski, host of the popular Financial Quarterback Radio Program, for your free economic plan. 888-988-JOSH. 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 Are you worried about the recent coronavirus crisis and how it may have affected your money? Hi, everybody. I'm Josh Jelinski, the Financial Quarterback, inviting you to join me for my complimentary six ways to keep calm during Turbulent Markets webinar. If you schedule and keep your no-obligation webinar today at 888-988-JOSH, it's a great thing to do if you're stuck at home under stay-at-home orders. Call us right now, 888-988-JOSH. If you're bored, there's never been a better time to get a second opinion on your wealth than right now. 
888-988-JOSH, 888-988-5674. And go to my website, retirementrealitycheck.com today and take your free investment profile quiz. And when you buy my book, you're eligible for three free gifts. 888-988-JOSH. Call Josh Jelinski, host of the popular Financial Quarterback Radio Program, 888-988-JOSH. Hi, we're back. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. And we're taking your calls on all matters financial at 800-321-0710. Wealthier clients saving in 401ks may fall into a tax trap. While many Americans worry that they won't be able to save enough for retirement, some financial advisors are concerned that wealthier clients are saving too much in the wrong type of retirement account. I don't know really who's concerned with that. I mean, some of these articles are, are interesting. Over the past few weeks, several new studies and surveys have documented growing concerns over a looming retirement crisis. This is one tip financially that I'm going to give you. Financial news media does says the same thing over and over again, and it's generally to appeal to either fear or greed, right? What we're trying to do is make you a smart consumer of financial knowledge from day one, my show when I was, I don't know, 25 and started my show, it was always about getting you, the listener, an extra edge. But this is interesting because this just reminds me that a lot of financial media you read, it's like reading like, it's like trying to pick the Kentucky Kentucky Derby's winner like last year. Well, Well, now there's a whole new crop of Colts It's like people want to invest and I want to go into Tesla and Bitcoin. Well, those things, they've already gone up meteorically. Like you got to find the next thing. What's the next, you know, Tesla? And what is the next Bitcoin? Now, Bitcoin's a little different because interesting article I read about um, that it's non-elastic. So like with our money, if there's more demand, they just print more money. With Bitcoins, you know, there's like 21 billion Bitcoins. So there's a limited supply and it's very hard to get new supplies. I mean, you could mine them. So apparently Bitcoin's becoming hot right now. But still, I I don't like, if you had a million dollars, would you rather buy a beach house or Bitcoin? You know, it's now a million dollars. Now buy the beach house. The Bitcoin's too expensive. Yeah, I, I, I don't, although the beach houses are expensive now too. Uh, I talked to a lot of realtors, you know, like LBI has doubled in value. Cape May doubles in value. I should have bought in Cape May. But my theory was always save the difference, rent, don't buy, because you're paying all of this, these property taxes and insurance, which property tax and insurance on a beach house, it's like 20, 30 grand. And that's like what you'd pay for a rental for three or four weeks. So it's like just rent. You kind of go for three or four weeks anyway, most a summer because you got to work. <laughs> so unless you're, you know, independently wealthy. So wealthier Americans, several new studies and surveys have documented growing concerns over a looming retirement crisis partially tied to the COVID-19 pandemic and subsequent economic slowdown. Well, there really wasn't a slowdown because of PPP, because of the steps Mnuchin and President Trump took, I don't know why we're hearing of a slowdown now, but apparently the unemployment numbers are not as robust as they thought they might be under President Trump with now having President Biden. Although the vaccine solution appears to be Right now, I went to see, could I get the vaccine at CVS? It was sold out. So there's the J&J vaccine, which is now launched, where it's one shot and it's apparently 70% effective. The Moderna Pfizer technology with that mRNA, which they say is like 90 to 95%, that's the one that's uh, a little more unproven technology. Um, They think the J&J is going to have easier, earlier adoption because it's very similar to how other vaccines were done. 
So somebody who might say, hey, well, I'm a little wigged out by the, by the mRNA technology, although that one's supposed to be better. Um, they're they're going to take the J&J one because it's, in their mind, less risky. So more than two-thirds of working Americans say the nation is facing a retirement crisis and more than half of the respondents are concerned that they won't be able to achieve financially secure retirement, according to a national ensuite on retirement security. I think that's true. But I don't know about where this article says that people are like serving into the wrong thing. I guess that I, I think the concern, and this is from an article by Mary Beth Franklin, who's been on the show before, writes great articles, has a lovely voice too. She is a voice for radio. Um, she is worried that, you know, it's a 401k trap. It's a new white paper we'll make available to you. The types of retirement account vehicles used today and the tax strategy around it need to change drastically. So basically, if you're deferring into a 401k, and this is kind of what I've been saying for years, so it's kind of old news, but if you if but think about it, because maybe it's new news to you. So if you are deferring taxes in a 401k, you're choosing to defer to a later date. And we'll talk about that when we return from the break. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Don't touch that dial. Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback time. here. Huh? In these uncertain financial times, it is imperative that you guard your financial future. If you call within the next three minutes, we will offer our complimentary bear market survival guide, which will detail steps to help your plan to potentially survive the COVID-19 crisis. The bear market survival guide will cover how you might still be able to retire amid a volatile economic climate. We will throw in our complimentary 27-point ultimate game plan for retirement. Call us at 888-988-JOSH, 888-988-5674 for your bear market survival guide. Call Josh Jelinski, host of the popular financial quarterback radio program, 888-988-JOSH, 888-988-JOSH. We're back. Some concluding thoughts. Interesting article here. A growing number of financial advisors, they should have listened to this show 15, you know, I don't know how many years ago I started, but a growing number of financial advisors are concerned that many of their clients are overstuffing their tax-deferred retirement accounts, which could undermine their financial plans if taxes are increased in the future to pay for today's exploding government spending. With a bigger tax by potentially cutting into future retirement income, the amount of savings needed for both average and wealthier retirees will be far greater than currently invested because... You could put, if you had a million dollars in a 401k in the old days, you'd only pay like 20% on the way out. You were in a lower tax bracket when you retired. What they're finding is most of these people who saved are in a higher tax bracket because they've been deferring taxes for so long. For workers who expect to be in a higher tax bracket in retirement, here's the other thing. If your financial advisor is telling you you will be in a lower tax bracket in retirement, fire them. Why? <laughs> well, don't you want to be in a higher bracket? I want to be in the highest bracket. I just don't want those highest brackets to be that high. So we have a lot of dumb financial advisors who, you know, they go into the 401k and they say, well, uh, you'll be in a lower tax bracket when you retire. No, I want to be in the highest tax bracket when I retire. So their tip here is the Roth 401k could help high income earners or business owners to use the Roth provision of the tax code, it's an ideal solution over time, is to create diverse and alternative tax structures, structures for future retirement income. For those no longer working who don't have access to a Roth 401k, you could look at cash value insurance. So some people can't afford, you know, they make too much to do a Roth IRA. You could also look at Roth conversions. So give us a call, my friends, 888-988-JOSH. And this is a timely opportunity. Professor Kotlikoff said this as well. If you haven't drawn Social Security, take from your IRA monies, let your Social Security compound, because it'll be very likely that they'll cut Social Security. They'll just tax you 50 or 60% to pay out those benefits. So folks, we've had a fun, fast two hours. This is the fastest two hours in weekend radio call us now 888-988-josh 
subscribe to the YouTube channel, call us right now. You get a free book when you schedule and keep your no obligation review and you get the maximifyplan.com free. 888 josh Go over to the YouTube channel. Share it with your friends. 888 josh The preceding program was sponsored by the Jelensky Advisory Group. Any awards, rankings, or recognition by unaffiliated third parties or publications, including Five Star Wealth Manager, Advisory of the Year finalist by Senior Market Advisor, and Top of the Million Dollar Roundtable, are in no way indicative of the advisor's future performance or any individual client's investment success. No award, ranking, or recognition should be construed as a current or past endorsement of Josh Jelinski or Wealth Quarterback LA. LC. Information regarding specific awards, rankings, or recognitions is available on the Wealth Quarterback website at www.jelinski.org. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. Investment strategies such as asset allocation, diversification, or rebalancing do not assure or guarantee better performance and cannot eliminate the risk of investment losses. There are no guarantees that a portfolio employing these or any other strategy will outperform a portfolio that does not engage in such strategies. This broadcast should not be construed by any client or prospective client as a solicitation to affect or attempt to affect transactions and securities or the rendering of personalized investment advice. Due to various factors, including changing market conditions, the information discussed in this broadcast may no longer be reflective of current positions or recommendations. While information presented is believed to be factual and up-to-date, Josh Jelinski and Wealth Quarterback do not guarantee its accuracy, and it should not be regarded as a complete analysis of the subjects discussed. The tax and estate planning information discussed is general in nature is provided for informational purposes only and should not be construed as legal or tax advice. Listeners should consult an attorney or tax professional regarding their specific legal or tax situation. Investment advisory services offered through Wealth Quarterback, LLC. WOR and WAXQ HD2 New York. The eyes and ears to your world. 